I don't know, man. It's it's not. I don't know. All right, so what's going on, guys? My name is CG Build. And welcome back to another video. So today we have the second ever Keychron board on this channel. This is the Keychron Q10. It is an Alice board. And one biggest thing to note, the knob is on the left hand side. A little bit weird, but I like it. Of course, we're going to be modding this thing to make it better. We're going to be swapping out some different things and just really just, just let's see what this thing has to offer. First and foremost, this motherfucker is heavy, dude. This is a solid like seven pounds. <laughs> dude, this motherfucker is heavy so opening it up i mean it's pretty normal nice packaging now you see this is the built version they do have a built version that's not built <laughs> and they do have the like the iconic keychron keycaps which aren't my favorite they don't look that good <laughs> but hey it's subjective it's perfectly fine for what it is so taking a look at the board i mean it, i mean it looks good solid aluminum build really like high quality once again knob on the left hand side pretty cool i, li I like the i like it it's a little bit weird but i like it you have the rubber feet on the back you have these screws they are hex screws as well and yeah pr really well built it is completely straight at the top with the USB type C and then the Windows and Mac option. And you also get the certain keys to be able to put that on for Mac users. Now, this is different from the Q8. I'm pretty sure I could be wrong. This one has the F row and then of course all the extra ness. <laughs> So if you do need your Afro, or if, even if you just think it looks better, here's your option. So here are some facts of the keyboard, and then we'll go into uh, doing a little bit of mods. So this is south-facing LED, no interference issues here. It is a CNC and aluminum body. It is VIA and QMK supported, which is good. A lot of people care about that. You have screw-in stabs here. And then for the keycaps, they are OSA profile, which that's their profile, which, once again, not my favorite keycaps but that's just me. Now something that is a little bit different is the double gasket design. So pretty much what this whole double gasket design is gonna do is they have it to where what they say is significantly reduce the pretty much the hollowness of the whole thing. So it's pretty much just a gasket mount and it has its own like silicone on the plate and everything but they also have these little gasket parts to go onto the top and bottom of the case so it, once again gets rid of that hollowness. It's pretty much a force break mod just without using tape. It's using the silicone. <laughs> And, I mean, okay, I will say, the hollowness isn't nearly as bad compared to what I've heard on other Keychron keyboards. I don't know, man. It's it's not... I don't know. You can definitely tell it works, though, so that's good. So, any hollowness, if that was, like, a thing, why you didn't want another one or something, like, this is it. This is pretty nice. And for, before we do the, like, stock sound test, we do have the Gateron Browns, I think it's what it is. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know why they sent me them. I don't like. I don't like these switches. They're not bad. They're just, you know. So, I mean, it's not bad. It's 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 a it's a keyboard. These stabilizers need a little bit of work, which is, it's weird because, I mean, they're known for being really good stock, and even this one, they said that this one's like innovative even more. But I don't see it. I <laughs> so we are going to be messing with those a little bit, and yeah. Other than that, I mean, it's it's good. I mean. Let's open it up to see what all it has in store. So opening it up, you take off these hex screws on the back, and then you pick it up, and the bottom part of the whole case is why it weighs so much. This bottom piece is so heavy. And so here you see a piece of their own tape for, like, its own tape mod. I, I like this. I think this is cool. Cause you, can, you can just take it off if you don't want it, or you can leave it on. I left it on, but it, it's nice to see that they're trying... And give you more options. It's pretty cool. I like how it's... It's probably not as good as just... I'm gonna be honest, using just like the normal tape. Because it does... It's like its own... It's so thick. So it's like... It's stiff. So like you just put it on there and it kind of just sticks to it. When it could be like some other tape. Like 
painter's tape and put it on there where you can kind of get it more in between the cracks and it'll just be better but I don't know uh, that's just me so for the bare bones version it starts at a hundred and ninety five dollars and for the fully assembled you have 215 USD so I mean it, it is up there it is more of their premium boards of course me personally I don't use Alice way enough but as in as someone who can appreciate a built a very well-built keyboard it's pretty good I like the price but not everyone's gonna buy that so I mean, it, it is what it is. Now, taking a look at the plate, I mean, it's a normal Keychron plate, nothing too fancy, it's all black, it looks good. Once again, it is hot swappable, and it is south facing, so that's both checks, it's, it's good. You do get some uh, pour on foam to go in between it all, which is good, but other than that, it's pretty much it. I mean, it's pretty, pretty good for what you get. Now it's time to do it a little bit my style, and let's see what we can do to make it sound good. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't do any mods. I mean, I, I mean, I could have, but like, it's a good board. I mean, they're, the Keychron boards are like known for being that good. I mean, what, what, am I, what was I gonna put in there? You know, and to make it to where the gaskets could actually like perform and work, I didn't want to throw in some the CG mod or anything like that, just because I mean it's just it's not gonna be as bouncy, and it is a pretty good bounce. And this way we'll be able to see how well this whole double gasket is gonna perform. So yeah, that's that's what we're gonna be doing here. So I guess we'll put it all back together and let's go ahead and put in these switches. Now, the switches I decided to go for are. I'm gonna be honest, little foreshadowing, <laughs> not the best for this build. <laughs> I, dude, I was very shocked. I put them in, I was like, oh, this is gonna sound great. Put them in. Yeah, yeah. So these are the Gateron X switches. Now these are from Canon Keys, which you can go down in the description and check out. I did lube these with Crytox 205 grade zero. They are a linear switch, and for a 70 pack, they come in at $34.30. The top house material is nylon, the bottom housing is nylon as well. The steering material is palm, the spring weight is 50 grams, 65 grams on the bottom out. It is five pins, and there are no factory lubing, which by the way, they're pretty good stock, but I did lube them just because Felt wrong if I didn't. <laughs> so they do look pretty good. I, I like this whole like white and brownish look. It, it looks pretty nice. Now as you can tell I didn't have enough to fill out the whole thing. Now for the stabs we went ahead and lubed them with Crytox 205 grade zero as well. I used a lube from Candy Keys once again and it definitely improved the way they sound. Not gonna lie. <laughs> now for the space bar ones it's actually a different stab like the stems and stuff are like white and for the enter shift and backspace they're different. So they're not clipped as well, so like that's a little bit of a bummer. They don't, they sound a little bit off compared to like the space bar ones, but not too different. It, it, it's it's still good. Once again, top knob at the left, pretty cool. I know, I know, I can't get over it. It's pretty cool. <laughs> now after installing all that, let's go ahead and talk about the keycaps. So we went with the Winter Tundra. Once again, I've used these in another build of mine, and I I mean I love these things. They look so good. They are on Kenny Key's website as well. I'm using everything from Kenny Keys. I don't know why. It's just how it is. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, just the look of it, stunning. I mean, you can't lie. It it, it looks like an enthusiast board. It just looks clean. Enough looking at it. Let's go ahead and hear this sound test. So, it, that's the sound test. It's, it's not my favorite. I don't think the switches were meant to go with this board. There almost sounds like on some keys that there's interference, but there shouldn't be at all. It's really weird, man. It's like, especially on the L. I don't know, there's like a little bit of, it sounds like interference, but like, 
Like there shouldn't be any interference. I don't I don't I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. But yeah, that's pretty much the build. Keychron Q10, really unique board, especially with the knob on the left hand. Hey, said it enough already. And yeah, I think it turned out I, I think it turned out pretty good. I, I it's not for me, but I can appreciate the sound. You know what I mean? Because a lot of different people, a lot of different preferences, so I, I I can appreciate it. But the board itself is really nice. I, I might pick it up. I, I'm not a big fan of the the whole Atlas board. I've never have been. But as in someone who's been dealing with a lot of keyboards, it is a it's it's nice to freshen up and get that new look. It's like it would be a good like display piece, you know what I mean? Like bam. You know what I mean? Like But yeah, thank you, uh Keychron for sending me this and Candy Keys and yeah, go to the description and check it out and order one if you want. But yeah, that is the end of the video. Hopefully you did enjoy and I will see you in the next one.